All right. Well, hello, ladies and gentlefolk. We had a, I was on earlier on today showing people how to do um, uh, make rows and doing uh, the uh, uh, the roll tables as well, so that they could do some things for their characters or for their games if they wanted to. Uh, so that video is on demand on Twitch and on YouTube. Yet. Okay. So uh, and today I kind of been on this D and D kick today because uh, we're getting new people involved in some of our games and. And uh, yeah, so I got lots of people I'm chatting uh, chatting it up with lately, which is kind of nice. Um, new people joining in the server, which you guys can too if you wanted to. Link to the server down below. Say come say hello. Um, and today I am talking about creating characters for your games, uh, and in particular NPC creation. So the character I'm creating is an NPC that's going to be appearing in one of my campaigns. Won't tell you which one. Could be my Stones of Favorite campaign. Could be my Dragons of Ice Bar Peak campaign. I know it's a boxed set, but I'm still probably still going to do it anyway, um, because the the boxed set is um, uh, well, it's it, it's got some cool things in there, but I like to make it a bit more interesting. Or this NPC might, this NPC might be showing up in a future campaign that I have uh, that is a home homebrewed campaign setting called Olivos. So that's going to be. Uh, I don't uh, this NPC. I'm not going to give it give it away as to when it is because it's quite possible I'm going to have some of my current players watch this, and I don't want them to guess when these NPCs are going to show up. So I, you know, trying to keep the spoilers to a minimum. Um, but I am going to be creating an NPC today uh, using some of the roll tables, and I'm going to be creating the roll tables as I go along here too, uh, to to kind of show how we're doing it. You can see the chat on the screen here from our uh, D and D chat uh, channel in the Discord server um so here we go yeah you're welcome to ch join in the chat either uh on the uh on the twitch or in the discord or where actually wherever you happen to be watching this you can certainly join in the chat on all right so i have to create some new characters and so the way i do this and you're going to hear a lot of the, the philosophy that i do but i'm also going to try and do this in a little bit of a different way than many people uh, will create characters. And, and I do actually full-on character creation for NPCs. I don't do random NPCs. I don't do... Well, I mean, I do do random NPCs, but I don't do them with... Um, like, superficially, I don't just use a basic monster stat block to create my NPCs. No, I create full-on characters because I know my players are going to start asking questions about my characters... Or like asking my characters questions in the middle of the game in the roleplay. And I gotta have answers for them. I can't just make that up on the fly. Or I can make it up on the fly and then probably make some mistakes as I go along. So I try not to. Um, it also allows me to have a bit of a deeper dive into the campaign too. And, and some of these characters end up being uh, characters that the players, uh, the other the player characters end up hating, loving to hate, or loving, or any of the above. Um, so I would try to make it as uh, as connect as easy to connect with as I possibly can. <clears throat> so. Uh, here we go. Uh, by the way, if, if you're on the stream, feel free to let me know how the sound's coming through. Um, and let me know if there's anything that's uh, that uh, uh, needs fixing because I can because uh, you know technology and all that sometimes it doesn't always work out. Anyway, uh, so we get to oh uh, let's um here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, telling you a little bit about the character I'm about to create character to create is a soldier and that's all i'm going to say so far i have to make, create a soldier for up in my campaign here uh, one of my campaigns here soon Won't, um so that's the mo most information i have now most of the time when people can create their characters like if you're in roll 20 and you use the character mancer to create your characters or if you're using the player's handbook you tend to go from left to right you tend to go from race then class then background and so on and so forth um i don't really Really do that. I tend to uh, stick specifically to. I, I kind of got to go backwards because I like to think of the class that a person chooses. Um, like for me, myself, and I as a real human being, the class that I would be would probably be a little bit closer to. Uh, well, a scholarly type class like a like a sorcerer or a wizard, maybe even a monk, except that I have absolutely no dexterity whatsoever. So, but I would choose that based off of my passions. I would also choose the background I have, which my background is as a researcher. So, uh, that background is based off of my passions, my life experiences, my family, and so on and so forth. So, when I create characters, I wouldn't create a character 
knowing this is the job that they have and then try to create all the backstory to go with it. I'm going to create the backstory and then help let that inform the job as best as I possibly can. Sometimes I kind of have to pigeonhole into a specific thing. Um, but in many cases, I will go, uh, as often as possible, I'll go from the way they were born, what the kind of crap they had to put up with in their lives before I find out exactly what kind of creature that was. So um, the creature I'm going to be creating this time has to be a soldier because that's what I need in my campaign. So creating a soldier. Um, now, some of you guys may have seen this before. Uh, my lovely little roll charts here. I'm going to be creating my roll charts as I go along. I have my own little roll twenty game that I use to uh, to create all of my characters as well, and then I can export them into my character compendium and then um, or character vault, I guess, and then import them into whichever games I need them in. And I use Xanthers a lot. So this is Xanthers when as it appears on roll twenty if you've purchased it, um, and you do if you are a member of one of my games. Uh, or any other DM who happens to have purchased Xanthers, then you can usually see what they, what's available there. And I spend a lot of time inside this is your life section. So um, the first one that I'm going to deal with is uh, it with my uh, with my soldier is I'm going to go through some of these origins. I like to go right from the very get go. Uh, and so um, inside your origins, I'm going to find out does this soldier know their parents. Uh, that's a really nice and straightforward one. It doesn't take a significant role to do that, so I just I'm going to use the dice. And Xanthars is really good for creating this kind of stuff. Oops, that's the commands tool for my for my Discord, not for roll twenty. So I'm going to roll a d hundred. And according to this eighty three, yes, I do know my, this soldier does know who their parents are or were, as the case may be. And um. Now I can now I have to try and figure out okay half elf half elf or half orc that makes me think okay maybe I really need to go find out uh, what race this particular person is uh, that might have a bit of an impact on some other things too so yeah okay fine let's go find out the race um, alrighty and this is where I'm going to create my first table uh, and that is in supplemental life tables in uh, Xanthus Guide. So uh, if you have the physical book I think the if I remember correctly it's on like page sixty nine somewhere in that book of course, or 67 or something like that. That's where it is. So we do actually have a, a place for um, for races uh, or a roll table inside races. And so uh, here we go. For those of you who didn't see the roll table stuff before or did see the roll table stuff before, um, I'm creating one right now. And I'm just honestly just basically using uh, Xanthers to create this. Uh, one really frustrating thing for me, I find, is that the, none of these roll tables that existed in Xanthers Guide actually were easily accessible. So I kind of have to create each one of these. Um, it's not that big a deal, frankly, to do it, except for to make sure that I get the waiting rates. So um, getting a 1 all the way out to a 40, that's 40 different options for human. Um, so there, there's 40 chances that I might get a human out of this. There's going to be uh, 10 chances that I get a dwarf out of this. So I'm going to add the 10. Apparently human are the most commons here. Uh, elf is also 10, uh, 10 chances. Uh, da -da -da. There's 10 chances of getting a halfling. And um, that there are five chances of getting a dragonborn. There we go. Just quickly put it, put it in there. I can see people chatting it up in the in the uh, stream right now in Discord. They're talking about co DMing. How do you that is how do you write a campaign together? That that can be tricky. I have actually co DM'd a couple of times before. In fact, one of my players is a former DM, but it was a text campaign, so you had lots of time to kind of plan things in between. So it's possible. Uh, that was Sky Guy who was co DMing with me. Uh, half elf. And it was actually more that I was co-DMing with him. It was his campaign. Half Elf, there's five chances that you'll get that. And you'll notice that I'm not including in here um, usual races. Uh, and that's because, generally speaking, um, these are the most common races. You're not going to find too many Asimar, unless, of course, you're in the Stones of Favor, at which point everybody's an unusual race, um, which is perfectly fine, of course. But um, this is where we are here. I should have gotten all yet. Yeah. And then the DM's choice. So this is if I were to ever roll DM's choice, that's when I would probably pull out one of those other uh, races, um, and then have to look at that. But I'm just going to go with a basic one here. Um, here we go. And now I'm going to create a lovely little macro button that goes with that. 
uh, oh, I'm going to, you know what, to make this easy, I'm just going to copy the text from here. So this is race. Um, why did you, so uh, choose a race. There we go. That's going to be what this thing is. Uh, chosen race um, from XGE, personal decisions. Uh, this isn't personal decisions. This is a supplemental table. There we go. And... Uh, and actually, that's not going to be a description. This is going to be, or this isn't going to be a, a query, I should say. Uh, this is just going to be straight out um, a rolled, a roll from the race table that I just created. Let's see if I did that right. I may have, uh, um, may have missed something in there, but let's test drive that lovely little macro out. Um, oh, I didn't. <laughs> that's funny. Let's click the right things. There we go. There's my button for my race. See what happens with it. All right. So according to this, uh, that roll chart that I just did, can't pulled in off of Xanthers. I rolled and it automatically rolled for me dwarf. So apparently this soldier is dwarven. This is good. I can work with that. It also means that when I go back to my origins in here, let's see here. Aha. Go back to my origins. Um, I don't have to worry about these other tables about talking about who my parents were. Uh, I do have somebody who's considering a tiefling. So for, if you're watching this, you're considering tiefling, uh, jump in. You might want to do this to determine whether or not you're, you've descended from tieflings or if you, what kind of, how your infernal heritage gets involved. All right. Oh, this is a long table. This might take me a couple to get set up, but that's okay. You guys can hang out with me here for a bit. <laughs> Alrighty, so we're going to create the birthplace table. Alrighty, here we go. Uh, let's make a new table. This one's the birthplace table. Huzzah, birthplace. Uh, okay, day, add item. Uh, this is so the first one here. 50 chances that we'll have that we'll roll home. Oh, I am totally laughing at you, Sarath, because you guys are part of my big joy that I get in life. Uh, particularly when you guys are fighting to make sure that you actually go to sleep at a decent time, too, you know. Um, oh. There, 80. And I'm just these guys in. 56 to 63. Uh, so for those of you who are like, how are you coming up with five? It's because the mathy things of conclusive, being inclusive of all the numbers. So 56 to 63, uh, normally that would be seven, except that we have to include the six, 56 as well. So it's eight. That's going to be eight chances of get, being born in the home of a healer or a midwife. Huzzah. Two chances of being born on a cart. I love it. Okay. Some of these things that they put into uh, Xanthers really makes the, uh, it gives you a chance to have some bizarre backgrounds <laughs> uh watching the chats watching the chats we now have in one of our campaigns a mom and a dad uh characters who never had a motherly bone in their body taking on that role go figure did i do the waiting on that i did do the waiting on that one all right good 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 Two chances of being born in a cave. Two chances of being born in a field. When somebody says, were you born in a barn? Yeah, the answer is usually yes. Oh, hang tight. Yeah, I tried to click on too many things there. Yeah, I totally clicked on too many things. Yeah. Oh, wrong place. Oh, my word. I am so click happy today. There we go. Birthplace. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. So I left off at field. Let's get the forest going. Two chances of that on our lovely D100. Ooh, can you imagine being born in a temple? I think you would probably be predestined to be that a cleric of that god, perhaps. Born in a battlefield. I would rather be born with an axe laying beside me than born in a temple, perhaps. That's just me. This is actually probably more closely related to where, where I would actually have been born, is in an alley or street. To be born in a brothel tavern or an inn. Oof. 
The inn doesn't sound quite so scary, but as soon as you put the words brothel or tavern, there's other options along with it. Oof. <laughs> Castle or keep, tower or palace, two options for that, or two chances for that. Roman was probably born in a temple. That's uh, Roman from our Stones of Faerun campaign. Probably born in a temple, he figures. In Chisenta is my guess. Look at that. We're flat backstory, and we're not even doing that right now. I love it. Um, among people of a different race. So I have a character named Harbeck of, uh, who's named Harbeck of Clan Darden Deliath, uh, Conjuration Wizard. Uh, he wasn't born among people of a different race, uh, but he ended up being adopted by Dragonborn, and that's why he's of a different clan. Uh, I think I missed that one there. And... Uh, yeah, okay. Right. Uh, okay. And so I got down as far as on a boat or on a ship. In a prison or in the headquarters of a secret organization. I love how those are both categorized together. Can you imagine being born in the headquarters of the Zentarum? It probably would feel like a prison. No, this is where I'm born. In a sage's laboratory. I am going to be a Petri dish baby. That's totally where I'm born. <laughs> All right. In the Feywild, one chance of that happening. In the Shadowfell, another chance of that happening. On an astral plane or in the ethereal plane, you know, the in-betweens. An inner plane of your choice. Oh, that would be tough. If I had to create a, t a table for inner plane of your choice or outer table for outer plane of your choice. That would make things interesting. Alrighty. So there's that. Now, uh, let's go to um, Young Life. I'm going to make this as a table of Young Life, basically. So I'm going to use my lovely little template here. Create a new macro. This is, um, you. actually, I can just call it Youth. So this thing here is going to be a table that says um, Decision about youth alrighty and so the name here is going to be uh, this is from Xanther's guide it is not personal decision it's origins um, so the birthplace siblings family friends um, childhood home actually you know what about childhood we'll just go with childhood that's a better one make sure you keep those spaces in there childhood um, which background did you, or no, that's, that's not what we're going to do. We're going to say, uh, which table do you want to roll on? I don't know why it caps, lot, it caps everything, but I do. So we're going to start off with, it's not going to be Guild Artisan that I'm going to do. It's this one here was the, uh, birthplace, um, oops, birthplace. Let's make it there. <laughs> uh, alrighty birthplace I don't have other options to plug in here yet but I will shortly we're just going to stick with just that so far so I should be able to get myself my template put in there and I should now have my childhood button with a query on it let's see what happens uh, oh, I did not type that in properly, otherwise it wouldn't have said this. Or maybe it would have. Okay. Well, I'm just going to do that anyway. See what happens. There we go. Got it. Yeah. So, my dwarven soldier was born at home. All right, that makes sense. There we go. And... Uh, okay. 
Alrighty, so that's that. So now we got, uh, we now know where they were born. Now we're going to go find out, does this dwarf have any siblings? Alrighty, so I love how they write, ooh, that's an interesting sound. Uh, I love how they write two or lower. What are the options for lower? Wizards of the Coast, you don't have to be weird about things. Just write down one or two. Those are your options for the numbers of siblings, okay? Um, let's make that table happen. And that table is um, number of siblings. And let's add some items. So there's two chances that you're an only child out of 10. There's Now, uh, this is where you're going to see one of those uh, situations where uh, you can't do a number thing. Uh, oh, and I'm going to have to be right back, so I'll be... Back in just a second here, guys, and you'll be able to see the rest of this. Okay, I'm back. All right. So, when you put that, that stuff into the into the code, though, you have to uh, like into the table. You have to make sure that you're not using a number on the front of it. Uh, it doesn't understand it very well. So, <laughs> so when you use the number on the front of that thing, uh, so instead of use like for example, like here it's saying one d three. You need to actually set it not to say 1d3 because when the t code goes in there for creating your table and you, you try to put it into the template, um, Roll20 tries to compute it as a number of some sort and it doesn't fit the template well. And so you don't. Instead, I put a hyphen in there just to make sure that it's not going to happen or a little dash. Uh, how, what are our chances? Oh, yeah, there's the chances of getting that too. Uh, thanks for your patience on that. Nature called really loudly and so I had to answer. Such is the life of people who spend lives on computers, I suppose. 
let's get the next one up here. So this one's going to be 1d4. Oh, I guess I should make sure plus one that I say exactly how many siblings we're getting. Um, that is siblings we're doing here because uh, I want to make sure I'm super clear when I roll things out. So two chances to get that. Let's put that back on here too. No siblings. There we go. This one here should actually, so one, two, three siblings. Uh, if, if you don't have, if you're using Xanthers, you don't have roll 20 or a computer or something like that to roll a 1d3, it's a 1d6 that you roll and then you use, so like um, one and two would be one, three and four would be two, so on and so forth. That's how you would do it. Uh, yeah. One oop, hyphen, because I said that's what you're supposed to do. 1d6 plus two siblings. That's a lot of siblings for a dwarf. Not unheard of. I have some in real life friends uh, where there are 10 kids in the family and they probably could have had more uh, if they wanted to. So anything's possible. And two options for that. It's interesting they chose one to d roll a d10 for that, but they don't say roll a dive when it would have been just the same. Um, so really. All of the balancing on that. I didn't actually have to do any of the balancing because it's two options, two options, two options, two options. So you know what? Just because I am going to do that because that's one of those annoying things for me. I'm. This is my OCD kicking in. Forgive me. Uh, all right, there we go. And so that's my number of siblings table. I'm going to put that into my lovely little childhood macro as one of my next options. It fits right here. Um... This is going to be um, number of siblings, and it is going to be on the one uh, on the table, one roll on the table uh, called number of siblings. Huzzah! There, that should now show up in my childhood macro. There it is. Apparently, I can't spell siblings. That's going to irritate me. Make sure I spelled it right in the macro. Yes, I did. Okay, here we go. Let's have a look at how many siblings we're going to get for this soldier. 1d4 plus 1 siblings. Alrighty, so let's roll that 1d4. Four siblings for my dwarf. Alright, four siblings for my dwarf. And... Now let's see here. Okie dokie doke. Now, we got to figure out what order my dwarf is in. So we're going to use this birth order chart. Uh, and I might end up using this a few times. So here we go. Let's make this table. There are different types of options here. So um, it's what's interesting about this one is now you're using multiple, D, uh, multiple die uh, to do this. So I'm going to pull out one of my other tools that I use uh, to create this table to figure out exactly how many options they are actually going to have. Uh, and that's any dice. I like the any dice tool to do that. So here we go. First of all, there's only going to be one chance that this dwarf happens to be a twin, triplet, or quadruplet. Um, oh, I didn't put that in the right spot. There we go. Only one chance that that's going to happen. So uh, let's now pull up any dice. And some, if you happen to know this kind of stuff off the top of your head, that's kind of handy. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say. Uh, 2d6 uh, in any dice. It's just anydice.com and you type in what kind of thing you want it to calculate and it's going to give you the percentages of what's possible. Uh, and so I can actually go with the percentage. If I know that there's only one chance that I'm going to get a 2, then now I'm going to pull up my lovely little calculator. Um, I'm just going to use a regular calculator website, which was the one I was using the other day. I was using, well, I could just use this one really. Um, I like this guy here. Nice and clean. So with him, I'm going to say, well, um, what is it? It was 2.78% of something was uh, the same as one out of something instead. So, you know, the whole equivalent fractions to see how good you are at your math kind of thing. So what I do is I say 2 point, what was it? 78, 78%. Should be the same as uh, what is that? That is, I, I'm doing this funny. Oh man, here comes the mathing. Um, 
out of 100. So, right, I want to divide that. Uh, I want to figure out what that's going to be. So that's 2.78 out of 100, 1 out of something else. So I'm going to multiply. By, so I'm going to divide it by 100, right? That seems really weird. That's, that can't possibly be right. Oh, how do I do it? Uh, what are the possibilities? Oh, I had this in my head. Who's going to help me here? Who's going to help me? Um, okay, well, let's go like this then. Two chances, uh, one chance of getting a two. Obviously, this is twice as much, so there's two chances of getting a three. Well, here we go. Let's do two chances. Um, that's going to be one, two, three. I have to figure this out now. That's going to irritate the heck out of me now. That... If I wanted to, um, yeah, that's not the one I'm looking for, though. Uh, 2 to 12 is my options. What are the chances? Because there's lots of chances you can get a 6. Oh, I had this all sorted out for you guys the other, before I started doing this. How crazy am I? 16% um, chance that I'm going to get. So, I mean, I suppose I could just go with the weighting that way. Let's try that. So the weighting here would be uh, 2.78 as the weight. I wonder if it kept that. Did it like that? It didn't like that. Yeah, it really didn't like that. So I have to figure this out. I have to figure this out. I, uh, what, uh, let's pencil and paper that thing or something. Ah, 2.78 out of... Oh, is out 1 out of... of x is equal to 1. 2.78% of x is equal to 1. That means that if I divide 1 by x, and I flip it, it's now 1 over 2.78. Oh, well, that's fine. Let's try that. Let's see. 1 divided by 2.78. 1. Uh, clear that. 1 divided by 2.78%. Yeah, that did not do anything for me at all. That didn't, definitely didn't cut the cheese. Okay. I'm going to figure this out right now. There are... Okay, I'm going to use this. Um... <laughs> how, how horrible is this? I had this in my head. How horrible. You guys are all going to skip this on the screen. I don't blame you. There's only one chance of getting a two. There's only... There's only one chance, two chances of getting a three, because those are your two chances, right? And then you get to get a four and go with this. Oops. Um, ah, that gets you. Um, yeah, okay, so there's, there's three chances of getting a four, and then getting a five, there's a bunch of chances. Getting, hang on, getting a five. Wait, DJ, come on. Two, three, three, two. This is a permutation, okay? For those of you who are watching me and you know anything about math, this is permutations, and I'm totally bollocksing it. Um, so there should be six, actually now that I think about it, six and six, six uh, chance uh, chances of things. Oh, there. That's what I needed to do. Is I needed to figure that out. This is, multiply the dice by six. So, uh, two point seven eight percent of 36. Holy crap, that was horrible. Why did that take so darn long? Ugh. All right. Well, I'm better now. In any case, now that I got that sorted, I can use dice, right? So if I know that I got two D6s, oh, that was such a brain dead moment. If you got two D6s, then you can do uh, six times six to find out how many total possibilities there are. And then you can use the any dice percentages to figure out what's, what's left over. So 5.56% of, that's what times is, of 36 total possibilities, two chances. Oh. <laughs> Y'all are laughing at me, and I know darn well you are. But this is, but here's the thing. That's only just for three. What about this four, five, six, and seven? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say three, four, five, six, and seven. I'm going to add all those numbers up. Uh, I'm going to move you over here so I can see these numbers better. There we go. So that is 5.56 equal plus... 8.3 plus 11.11 plus 13.89 plus 
15, 6, 7. Haha, -ha. that gives my gives me my 3 to 7. That's 55.56%. So time, uh, now I'm going to times that by the 36. And because I didn't put the use the percent button, I'm going to make that use that to make the percent there. 20 chances of me getting that the person is older. 20 chances. All right. Wow, that was pretty darn painful. You guys are such troopers if you stuck that one out, and I don't blame you if you didn't. All right, so my lovely new item. Where'd you go? Um, what did I do now? All right, there we go. That's better. Oh, there it is. Uh, okay, got it. All right, so bring you up front here. There we go. So the twin triplet, quadruplet, there we go. Uh, there was two chances of that, apparently. Uh, no, there shouldn't be two chances of that. There should be only one chance of that. And there should be, as we said, 20 chances of getting older sibling. And which makes me think there's probably, well, 21 and I got 13. So there's 15 chances of it being an, a younger sibling. All right, fine, if that's what they want to go with. So 15 chances of being a younger sibling, because that was is what's going to add it up to 36. Ah, uh, no, this is not what DMing is. This is this is this is Windy J being brain dead. That's what the, that's what this is. Ah, <sighs> there we go. This is not what DMing is. I could simply roll. I could really have just gone like this, but I uh, like gone typed in roll two d six. Totally could have done that. However, I want to be able to use this really quickly and fast. And I'm also thinking about exporting all these tables and turning them into a tool that other people can use as well. But uh, so I'm actually plugging all this in as I'm going along. So this is not what DMing is. This this is Windy J making work for himself right now. So he does it makes uh, it makes it less worky later on. Ugh. Okay, so um, now that I got that lovely little chart made, let's put that into the make row. Uh, and now now we have another option in here, and this is, um, did I give it a name yet? No, I didn't give that a name. I got to give that one a proper name. This is the birth order table. Birth order. There we go. Birth order, and then it is going to, I'm going to ask it to roll on the table, on the birth order table. There, now I've got that in there. Theoretically, I typed everything properly. Now I can choose not just the birth place, but also the birth order. Send it. So, um, we already I already figured out there's going to be four siblings for this uh, sailor. Four siblings. Uh, there's an older sibling. This, see, now this is where I can actually do this much more quickly. Second one. Ooh, so th I'm going to say that this is... Uh, well, let's see what we get. We're going to get four of these things drawn. Okay. Um, all right, so that would therefore mean in my head that three of the siblings are older and the last sibling is a twin. So my soldier is a dwarven soldier. Uh, I don't need to talk about it to myself on right now. Okay, dwarven soldier with um, four siblings. Three older ones, and I'm just typing this in so I don't lose it. And one and one twin, and therefore born at home. Okay, there, cool. All right, so that's the number of sibling. That's the birth order. Now I could get into this other stuff as well, which I think I plan on doing a little bit of for each of these siblings. Let's go with the occupation first. So that means I have to now go to where it says a supplemental table. Occupation, alignment, status, relationship, things like that. Um, I And there's actually one here, gender, personality, those kinds of things. Um, I am going to create my own table for gender because um, despite the fact that a lot of Wizards of the Coast materials are um, very much... Um, non-specific in regards to their in regards to gender you don't see him or her uh, pronouns and ever through the wizard of the coast books um they still when they made the xanthers guide rule table they didn't include non-binary genders in the rule table i don't think uh maybe they did maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm out to lunch let's go find out uh so this is in the supplemental life tables 
where we're going to see. Let's see. Where's the gender one? Race, relationship status. Oh, we didn't get gender. Yeah, they didn't even make a table for gender. How about them apples? So I'm going to make a table for gender, and I'm going to kind of base it off of uh, North American reality. Um, actually, I'm going to make it better than North American reality because North American reality says that um, uh, gender is uh, either male or female, and like point. 75% of the population is non-binary. Uh, I only think that that's true because that that's what they report because that's what people actually have. That's how many people have actually come out. Uh, so I'm going to round that way up uh, to like 2% of people are probably non-binary at the very least, probably more than that. But based off of the stats, I'm just going to go with that instead. So um, I'll go by, by the percentages when I make my gender. I'm going to make my gender table right now. Let's do that. Let's go with uh gender table so the gender i'm gonna and i'm gonna go basically with the binaries and the non-binaries and that's pretty much all i'm gonna go with and then with because that's gender identity which is different than um and i'm not doing sex i'm just doing gender identity and then that's different than orientations uh so i'm not i'll do a different table probably for orientations if i need to i don't think i'm gonna need to for most of my npcs but i do think i'm gonna need the gender stuff so first gender i'm gonna deal with is the non-binary uh which kind of gives me a little bit of latitude two chances out of a hundred um but that's the case of like two percent i know that's not what the stats say but that's what i'm gonna do because because lgbtq issues um then we're going to go with male and we're going to give them 49 percent of the time no oh, sorry can't i can't math hang on 49 if i do two for that then that's going to lead me down to 98 so yeah 49 yeah 49 percent of the time would be male therefore and 49 percent of the time would be oh sorry female that'll work Okay, so there's my gender table. Um, and this is going to be, I'm, th these are, in, I'm making this my supplemental tables, supplemental life tables. So this will be a new sting. So here we go. Let's make my supplemental life. Um, that's what this is. So here we go. Um, supplemental life tables and this is again from there we go um let's go with first of all let's make the first one uh one i'm going to roll on is going to be gender um and that comes off the gender table i'll change these other ones later for now this will work i'm going to put it in the bar so here we go supplemental life tables i'm going to roll for gender so let's roll for the gender of the oldest child in this dwarves family. The oldest child is male. The second one is female. The third one is also female. And the twin is female. I haven't actually even decided what the gender is of my dwarf yet. So let's do that now. <laughs> yeah, okay. Wow, lots of females inside this family. So the, only the oldest sibling is male. Um, Alrighty, so that's that's interesting. Okay, that now we're kind of getting a little bit of background for what the NPC can do or can be. Alrighty, hey there. I don't know how to say that name. K Kyoat Kyot Kit K. I'm gonna call you K. Uh, it, you can tell me how to pronounce that. I would not mind in the slightest if you did. Um, all right. So that's the gender there. Now we're going to start talking about the um, how. What was the other ones here? We need to do. We need to figure out what kind of occupation the siblings have. So let's make a table for occupation. Here we go. Added a table, occupation, and let's see here. All right. So five chances of this person being an academic. Boom, and you are in. Five chances of them being an adventurer. Not very common, but it's still possible. Um, five. Uh, ooh, even less common for them to be an aristocrat. I appreciate that, that they did that. An artisan or a guild member, there's going to be lots of them out there in Faerun. So here we go, that 12 to 26, that's 14 plus one. So it's 15 chances of them being an artisan or a guild member. Um, 
uh, four or five, four, five chances that they're going to be a criminal. Okay, coyote. Oh, coyote, coyote. Like Kai, like Sky. So coyote. Cool. That is. I've never seen the name there. It is right there. See, uh, coyote's now following. Thing. But, but uh, oh, I guess I shouldn't have done that. Thank you, coyote. Though, um. Coyotes are quite common in my little area. Of course, the, I'm talking about the creature, not necessarily this particular subscriber. And I, but, but I'm glad to have you kicking around. Uh, all right, entertainer. Five chances that this person is going to be an entertainer. Um, two chances that they're going to be an exile, hermit, or refugee. Um, ooh, little tab thingy in there. Two chances. And an explorer or wanderer. That is, what is that? It's five chances that they're going to be an explorer or wanderer. Um, Twelve chances that they're going to be a farmer or a herder. That's I appreciate that, actually, because um, the, this is a, a lot more of a of a agrarian society, I thought. Coyote is a father of a player. I love it. So hello, Coyote. Uh, just, just, yeah, you know what? Maybe people don't know who I am yet. Um, and that would, could be worth kind of talking a little bit about while I'm doing my copy-paste routine here. Um, I'm a teacher. Uh, I'm a high school music teacher, actually, by tri by my day job. and um, But by my night uh, love, I, I'm a D&D &D freak. I love this game. It is ridiculous how much fun you can have with it, perhaps. Um, so, yeah, I uh, uh, that, that, that is who I am. Uh, of course, we keep things fairly open here because D&D &D is one of the most inclusive games in the world, and I have such appreciation for Wizards of the Coast and for all the people who play it, the Critical Role people, the um, and the people I play with who play all sorts and keep people um, honest, I suppose. And when Dad has been playing since the 80s, uh, yeah, you, what you played in the 80s is not the same game as that we play today, that's for darn sure. Uh, that Advanced Dungeons and Dragons is definitely a far cry away from 5th edition. I do appreciate 5th edition quite a bit because 5th um, edition happens to be... Um, oops. 5th uh, edition happens to be really accessible for a lot more people, which is probably why it's seeing such a surge in poverty right now. Um, Roll20 is the tool... Yeah, way different. Roll20 is the tool that I use to play with my uh, friends and family right now. Thank you, COVID, for doing that to me. But you know what? It's actually a really good resource. That's what I'm doing right now as I'm setting up my Roll20. Uh, this table occupation. So we're going to put this now into a supplemental life table. And this is me coding it a little bit. Now, chances are people who were in the 80s and did Dungeons & Dragons, chances are um, uh, that... Uh, a lot of these tables and the, like uh, the, the dice used and so on and so forth, depending on who you were, uh, are quite a bit different. Uh, this is the one I wanted to change. We're not doing number of siblings. This is the occupation. Um, let's roll on the occupation table. 3,000 hours. I'm working on that. I'll catch up. Don't worry. I'll catch up. Um, but yeah, Roll20 has become quite a quite a handy little... There's lots of other tools out there, too. So this is just my personal choice. Um, there's, like, uh, other virtual tabletops. There's D&D Beyond. I actually um, am waiting very intently for when Roll20 comes out with their um, mobile app. Because I'm 100% convinced that that's going to be where I spend most of my time. All right, we got this uh, Origins table now done, or Occupations table done. Let's see what occupations each of these siblings have. So the male older sibling is a laborer. The female older sibling is a farmer or herder. Uh, the next, uh, third child is also a farmer, so maybe probably family farm or something like that. So obviously I think, think these guys are probably going to end up being hill dwarves based off of what I've seen here. Um, we have an explorer, somebody who's traveling. That's, hang on, that's one, two, three, four. That's the twin. That's interesting. That's the that one's the twins. So um, that brings me to Eddie from this for this uh, soldier. And I've, as I've already said, my the character I'm creating is a soldier. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I I can't remember what they're all called. There's like um, uh, oh, oh, I can't remember. It starts with an F. <laughs> Thirteen games a week. 
Woof. That that would be some uh, that would be some dedication. Definitely some dedication. I'm the kind of DM that likes the role play. Uh, the role play makes uh, to me it makes a big difference here. You know what? This race button shouldn't be by itself. This race button should be inside the supplemental life table. So I'm going to put the race into the supplemental life table here. Um, not the birth order. We're going to go race can go in here, and then this can go in there. There we go. That way I don't have so many buttons across the bottom here, and I can just get rid of this maker. I don't need you at all anymore. Huzzah! All right, so have an occupation. Uh, I could determine the relationship here if I wanted to. Do I want to do that? You know what? Let's. Yeah, I'm going to do these, the relationships and the statuses. Let's make these tables here real quick because if some of these siblings are dead uh, or if they're being mean, that could uh, have a big impact on how my soldier views life totally so let's see here let's go fantasy grounds thank you coyote that's totally what it is fantasy grounds Ugh. there's another one actually there's a i'm a member of a D, D maps group in on facebook and they have uh, there's a poll up on it right now newer arrangement you use uh, and there was a, this person had like a list of like 20 options, including PowerPoint with Skype. I thought that was kind of fun. I've never thought of that, but that's also because I'm lazy as heck. So, okay, here we go. 3D4, got to figure out how many options there are. So 3D4, three times four means there's 12 possible outcomes here. And here's our percentages that would show up if we were to do that. Huzzah. So um, one chance I'm going to get a three. That's all three dice being ones. So. Um, one chance of being, oh, but I'm going for four. So we're going to go with um, 1.56 plus the one for four is 4.69. Huzzah. And then multiply that by the 12 possible outcomes. Turn it out of a preferred percent amount. And 75. Um, that can't be right. It can't be right. 6.25. Can I not math? 6.25. You know, I'm a, I'm I'm much better than this. I promise you guys. That doesn't feel right to me though. So six point two five um, percent of twelve. Yeah, that's not right. You can't get that. There's more chances than that. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, maybe a little bit. I mean, I I enjoy this stuff. It, it, it kind of keeps my brain fresh. Um, that's one. This should therefore be... Okay, there's like... Th one, two, three, four options here. No, three, three plus four. Oh, how is this happening to me? Again. That is weird. Okay, because if I think about it, 18.5% of 12. Uh, that's actually not the number of outcomes I can have. Ah, ha, ha, ha. It's actually, because uh, I was being dumb with my calculations, is 4 times 4 is for one dice. It's actually going to be 4 cubed, not 4 times 4 times 4. Or is it not 4 times 3, which is what I was doing. There we go. 64. That makes way more sense. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, there we go. Times 64. Yeah. Uh, but divide that by 100 to see how many chances I will get that. Four chances that I will have um, three and four together. So four chances. Huzzah. And yeah, this is totally way more work. Uh, I'm totally just getting this set up so that people, so that I can use it in the future. So I'm totally trying to make my life easier later, even though it's making my life hard today. Totally making my life hard today. Well, when you've been playing since the 80s, I'm sure you have a huge amount of uh characters you can work with and if you're if your son's anything like my son you've probably he's probably created dozens of characters per month <laughs> so that makes things a little bit more interesting too all right here we go five this is one where we're going to have lots of friendly outcomes here so um 9.38 plus 15.63 plus 18.75 Plus 18.75. Plus 15.63. And then... 
how many was I supposed to go to? It was supposed to go to 10. That's how many it's supposed to go to. And then add the 9.38 again. Oh, I could have probably figured that out by going backwards a whole lot better. Oh, well, life happens. Times 64 uh, divided by 100 gives me my percent. So 56 chances that we're going to have a friendly person here. Alrighty. Ah, there you go. That'll do it. That will do it. All right, here we go. Now we've, we already know from the hostile side that the waiting is going to be four. So let's add four more on. And that's going to be the other two here. So this is an indifferent. And as in, they don't care. All righty. So. <clears throat> All right, so let's find out what these characters think of their brother, sister. Hang on, what was it? No, there's... Their sister? Is that who it was? Yeah, their sister. So this soldier's female, right? Not gender. We're gonna go with oh I didn't put it in the in the chart. Let's do that first. Let's put it into the micro. This micro that we're making was the relationship. And um we're gonna roll on the relationship table. Huzzah. Now let's do this. There's the relationship. Roll that baby. Alrighty. So the older brother is friendly. The oldest sister is also friendly. The second sister is also friendly. And now the twin is friendly. How about that? They're a friendly family. Marvelous. That felt like it was so much work. Um for such a simple outcome but i probably like when i i'm creating a soldier today when i create the merchant that i have to create later later all i'm gonna have to do is press these buttons and it's gonna be like, bah, 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 bah. i'm gonna have a deep story and that's what i want i want to be able to create deep stories super fast that's what i really want to be able to do so uh let's go for a status now oh this could be interesting we're gonna go for deaths all righty <laughs> okay, so this is the status table that we're going to create now. Um, and like I said, it would have been so much easier if when you got purchased um, the Xanther's Guide for Roll20, it automatically gave you all the tables. It didn't. And so that's why I have to do all this myself. Uh, and as irritating as it is. So now we're going to roll 3d6 this time. So 6 times 6 times 6, 36 times 6 is a lot. <laughs> 36, oh, clear. 36 times 6 total possible outcomes. Oh, times 6 again. There we go. 216 total possible outcomes on this outside here. Uh, and so our first two here, um, 4 to 5. That is 1.39 less 2.78 equals. Multiply that by the 216 and divide it by t uh, 100 to make it out of the percentage. Nine chances. All right, so this next one is going to be nine chances that we're going to get. I'm curious. What are the strangest characters you have come up with? Or what you, what you think are the strangest? Because we are playing D&D. There could be lots of strange characters. Go ahead and tell me in the chat. What's the strangest character that you've ever come up with? Okay, six and seven while I'm doing this. Um, 4.63 plus 6.94 plus uh, 9.72 equals. Multiply that by 206. No, I'm going to multiply by 2.16 because that's the same thing as doing it anyway. So it's 46. 46 chances that we're going to get... A male minotaur bard that only sings current songs by female artists. Interesting. Lady Gaga with horns and hair, lots of it too. Go figure. Um, that could be that. That would be highly entertaining. Uh, critical role. Um, Sam Regal would would love you for that. I'm sure. Uh, okay, so there we go. Actually, um, no, it was probably one of my favorite characters, but it takes a lot of work. Rogue, who knows lots of languages but can't speak any of them because they're mute. That one would be interesting. We had a Kenku for role play because you have to mimic things other, th other people say. 
um, unless you put a lot of work into figuring out what the heck they're going to say. Um, so it's tricky, right? It's tri uh, so like I can only imagine how difficult that would have been to do a mute language knowing creature. That would have been really challenging. So, okay, we're going to go from 9 to 12, add all those beauties up. Oh, and actually, it's just, and I'm going to multiply that by 2, and then multiply by 2.16. So 104 chances that, wow, I don't really realize how many op possible outcomes there are when you roll three dice together until you do this. But out of that, 104 option chances are that this person's going to be alive and well. Eh. Huzzah. Yes. And actually, Nightingale was really interesting. It's just um, with such a heavy arc play RP game as we've been having with Stones of Faerun, um, we wanted to have a little bit more opportunity to do something different with them. So uh, it was good to actually end up getting Surgeon instead. And so that's who we have now. It uh, looks like this is all an inverse, so I can actually just use some of the data I've already figured out. So 46 chances that um, this person is live and quite successful. Uh, then uh, nine chances that this person is alive and infamous. So famous that you don't even know who they are. <laughs> and then one chance that they are alive and everybody knows who they are. All right, let's see what our siblings are like here then. Put this into my supplemental life tables. Okay, this is status table. Um, one T and this is, uh, where are we? Uh, oh, yeah, I just called it the status table. I wasn't any more creative than that. I could have been, I suppose, but point when we're just trying to be functional, right? Oh, right. Okay. Let's see what happens. Okay, so older brother, alive and well. Well, this is apparently important, but nobody knows how. Uh, that might be interesting to try and figure that one out. Uh, okay, the second sister is had some sort of problems in her life. Uh, so I could flesh that out if I wanted to. I might. I might not. Now the twin. The twin's just alive and well. So everybody's alive in the family, which is nice. Um, this could be kind of interesting that this person might actually end up being a fairly important dwarf in our character. In our game who knows weirdest character you made was a tweak on an old one a warforged artificer arm whose arms can transform into a high-powered sniper and has a minecart mount <laughs> all right all right sounds like a mech warrior almost <laughs> a mech warrior with uh with a little bit of extra stuff into it that's kind of hilarious right there Uh, I haven't had the opportunity to do a lot, an awful lot of particularly unique characters. I've had some people come up with some fun ones like forest gnomes that are two feet tall, but their beards are four feet long. Um, things like that. I suppose anything's possible. Okay, so now I know about all the siblings. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to see if I can figure out about the, the, some, the rest of the origin story. And the next one that we have to get into is going to be the family and whether or not, and then our lifestyle. So let's go into the family here first. Let's do this guy here. Nice thing is only D100, so this is going to be super easy to create a table. I don't have to do any math because obviously math is failing me horribly today. Uh, and if I had anybody who knew me in real life watching me right now, they would be saying, that's not good seeing as you're a teacher. And I'd be like, I know. But even teachers are allowed to have off days. Um, okay. So this is the family table. All right, let's add an item. Uh, they have no family. That would be highly unusual considering the role just did. Um, now let's see here. The family table, who, who this is kind of who raised us. Uh, so maybe all my siblings exist and my parents exist uh, and we know each other, but I wasn't raised by any of them. That's a possibility. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The and that's true. Actually, I found <laughs> the artificer was no taller than a halfling. Awesome. 
um, I find that um, one shots can be very useful. I actually used one shots that already existed previously for the Stones of Favor and campaign simply because um, I wanted to use it as a way of kind of getting people connected to the area and then build up from there. Um, and so uh, it's quite possible stones, people don't realize it, but these were one shots that were pre-published already that I kind of sh uh, smashed together a little bit and formed the basis of the rest of the campaign, which are now no longer one shots. They are now full deals. So um, that's uh, that's the next stage, I suppose. Uh, this is one chance that you're born, uh, that you're raised in an institution like an asylum. Ooh, and then this is where we get uh, to Roman's uh, character, raised in a temple. Ha ha ha. Now we're gonna go for an orphanage. Maybe you were raised in an orphanage, even though you weren't an orphan. Be interesting. Uh, raised by your gar by an, a guardian, not by your parents. Few chances of that happening. Uh, parent paternal or maternal aunt, uncle, or both, or extended family, so like a tribe. That's could in that could be interesting here. So that's seven, eight chances that that would have happened. And that that could be rolled. Cloned human raised by gnomes. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, Rebels pointing it out. The new book that's coming out here, I'm pretty stoked about too. Um, it'll be coming out March, I think, is when it's coming out. Um, Wizards of the Coast got some pretty cool stuff coming inside that guy. Um, mysteries actually is what that seems to me like they're going to be is more mysteries based, so that they aren't just shots like uh, Dragon Spire, uh, Dragons of Ice Spire Peak. Or Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Actually, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden is pretty good. Rhyme of the Frost Maiden starts off feeling like a whole bunch of one shots, and eventually develops into something that's more campaigny, uh, which I really appreciate. Uh, let's see here, twenty chances that this could happen. Ooh, and I got a tab in there by accident. And this is also going to be twenty chances. And then finally, 25 chances that you're raised by both mom and dad. All right. So now we only have to do this guy once. This is the family and friends section. So that'll be part of the, I say that's part of the childhood thing. So this is, uh, in the childhood, we're going to add a family. And we're going to roll on the table. Oops. Wrong order. Roll on the table that said family. At least I think it already gave it its name. Double check that, I suppose. Yeah, I did. All right, let's go check out your childhood. What was your family like here, dear little dwarven soldier with multiple... You were raised by your grandparents. Interesting. All right, all right, all right, all right. So now that we know that, we're going to have to figure out where the parents were. Oh, okay, so... <laughs> College and bank accounts. Never friendly combinations. Uh, seems to me that I got disconnected here from something. Just see where we're at. Oh, YouTube disconnected. That's unfortunate. Oh, that's all right. We'll uh, upload things from Twitch onto YouTube later on anyway. All right, so let's get this absent parent thing at roll uh, table going. So this is now. Uh, oops. There we go. Uh, Absent parent. All right, let's find out. Parents died, and they're all going to be equal. That's kind of nice. I like the ones that it's easier for me to copy and paste. Okay, and or whether or not the parents abandoned us. That'd be an interesting story to figure out why this family is doing so well, but the parents abandoned. That could be super interesting. So let's go find out. Uh, chunk, chunk, chunk. Uh, and this is what I would use for creating a regular character as well, by the way. For all those who are like, is this what you do for NPC? Yeah, totally. But this is also what I would do for a regular character. Uh, is I go backwards. I figure out all of the, what they were born like to help me decide what kind of class, what kind of, and so on and so forth. Um, unless, as much as possible, because I find the stats are better and it's easier to figure out what kinds of uh, skills and so forth you have. Uh, if you go backwards in the book, as opposed to going forwards. Uh, alrighty, and this one was the absent parent table. Alrighty, let's go have a look-see. Absent parent. Show me. 
Oh, our parents were were imprisoned, enslaved, or otherwise taken away. So that's uh, dwarf the, all of this dwarf family. So that's and that's probably all I'm going to go for. I'm not going to deal with anything else. I don't have to go any di dive any deeper into that. Yeah. All right, let's go. So now the family style. Um, this is one of those cases where I would say, based off of the information I've already got, do the grandparents, this is going to be basically the grandparents' lifestyle. And this could actually be a lifestyle table that I could use um, anytime. For example, if I was to, I'm going to actually keep this not just as a family lifestyle table, but a regular lifestyle table, because I could use this to describe taverns that, that my characters come across, right? So I could easily use this table for anything I wanted to. So rather than just saying family lifestyle, I'm actually going to say all lifestyle. Okay, we're going to go with lifestyle. This could be I come across a random farm on my travels as one of my random encounters. What's the lifestyle of the farm? Is it a good farm? Is it broken down? Is it um, a rich plantation? What kind of thing is it? So um, let's see here. First one is a wretched uh, lifestyle. Um, and then, and now here's the interesting thing was that we actually have to make sure minus 40 on childhood home table. Uh, so we have to keep that in the back of our head and we're doing this too. So there's one chance of that. I'm going to go, um, to aristocratic cause it's the same, going to be the same amount. Aristocratic at 40. On the childhood home table. I guess I should just have that copied. That would make things a whole lot easier if I did that. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to have a certain number of options for getting fours and fives. Oh, look at that. I got it right here. How fantastic. So um, 1.39 plus 2.78 equals multiply that by the 216 options there are. And I end up nine chances. Okay, so cool. Let's go back over here. I think I remember that now. Nine chances. That. Oops. Nine chances that the conditions that he this person grew up in were squalid. Yeah, which also means that there's going to be nine chances that they were wealthy. Oops. I didn't need to do that. Alrighty. Okay. One shots, Romans. Make it up on the spot. Works. Played a one shot with a player with uh, my old group. So, so uh, hanging out. Um, yeah, that's kind of sometimes how it goes. Yeah, yeah, and that, that, that kind of makes sense. I kind of wanted to grow it from that. Make sure that we had some uh, decent connections first, uh, and I think it worked. Honestly, we have a pretty good core group now, um, which is nice and and now you guys are off exploring your background stories just a little bit and that's exciting because uh, you've worked really hard on those and I, I wanted you to be able to enjoy the fruits of your labor uh, six to eight so we're gonna go um, 4.63 4 point oops clear that 4.63 plus 6.94 plus 9.72 equals okay now let's multiply that by the 2.16 Okay, 46 chances. Back at that 46 again. That sounded familiar to me too. 46 chances. And of having a poor, with a modifier of 10 on the childhood table, which means I'm also going to have 46 chances of having it be comfortable on that table. And... Now, the last bit, so whatever that is, I'm going to go 216 minus 46 minus 46 minus the two nines, which is 18 minus 2, leaves me with 104. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so 104 chances that the household was lit, grew up in a modest scenario. No, rule, uh, no modifier on the childhood home table. There we go. Huzzah! Let's find out. My soldier, who was raised by his grandparents, or her grandparents, 
Um, oh, I got it on there. Family lifestyle. We got to get it in here. We're going to go with supplemental life table. We're going to add one more option in here. It is the family lifestyle, which I, mean, I just named the lifestyle table. Here we go. Save those changes. Uh, rehash that out. And we're going to go. Oh, it didn't. Did I not save it? Is that what the dealio is here? I probably didn't save it. Uh, save the changes. Okay. Oh, that was that's really weird. Why? 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 All of it? Why? Uh, did I type something funny? Family lifestyle. Oh yeah, I forgot to put the comment. That's like Perl coding. Always miss the semicolon. Don't do that. <laughs> All right. It doesn't like me right now, though. Did I put it in the wrong? Oh, because I probably put it in this table. That's totally what I did. I put it in the wrong table. That'll make a difference. This is supposed to be in the childhood table. Alrighty. There we go. Get that option marker, vertical line separator in there. Now we should be able to get there. Ah, ha. <laughs> All right. Let's see what the result is. Okay, so they grew up poor. And so now we're going to do the childhood home table. Uh, All righty. And yeah, this seems like an awful lot, but this is actually like I, I've created when I created Harbeck of Clan Dard and Goliath. That's how this is how I came up with his backstory. Uh, if when I created my other one, uh, Ronwyn Glittergem, who is a, um, a Twilight Domain cleric gnome. Rock gnome. Uh, she was rolled out this way um, to find out all of her background. All this. That's kind of how I rolled with it. So um, the trick on this one is that this is a uh, what are the chances of, but it's got a modifier that comes from someplace else. You ignore the modifier when you're trying to figure out the tables on this um, because the modifier doesn't really impact the number of opportunities that things get rolled. So here we go, childhood home. Okay, so there's on a D100. Mm. Well, what we'll do is we'll say, is we'll pretend it was a zero. So if, the, if there was a modifier, it's impossible to get a zero. So we're just going to go from the one to the hundred. And that's all we're going to do. And so. Um, the, in this case, there, there isn't really a 100 per se. Um, oh man, that's still, still really tricky because there's all sorts of chances here and they rolled it out kind of funny. How do I do this best? I think, uh, uh, yeah, no, I'm just going to do it as if there wasn't anything there at all. Um, oh, I got, I, you know what I could do is I could do percentages with this instead. So, um, percentages of these. Uh, so we have uh, the maximum possible that we could get is 140 on this. Um, the minimum we could get is negative 40. Boy, you know what? I might not even be able to do this one that way. Childhood home. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do instead this is one of those things where I'm not going to be able to make the table for it, so I'm not going to put it in here. I'm not going to make the table for it. Too twixy to do. But I'll put it in here and say childhood home. And But rather than it saying uh, uh, so the result of a roll on the table, it's going to sit, tell me, give me instructions. Roll. Um, uh, C table in Z answers guide. Use the modifier from family lifestyle. Let's see. And there we go, because the comma is going to confuse it. All right. So if I did, if I designed that properly. When I choose childhood home, it should just tell me stuff. 
and it does. That's exactly what it did. So I, uh, that's going to remind me that I'm going to actually have to use something creative on that one. So I'm going to roll. In this case, he was poor. So I'm going to go roll a 1d100 minus 10. There we go. Straightforward. 62. So he grew up in a small house with his grandparents. Not exactly rich. Lots of siblings. One of them becomes apparently some slightly infamous. And we're not entirely certain why. Let's find out about the memories. Now, this one is also going to be interesting um as well based on the modifier uh, so because i haven't created the charisma modifier on this guy yet i'm going to hold off on him and uh, we'll come up with the childhood memories later on all right so that gives me my birth stuff now i'm going to go into the decision king um did i do that decision why did i become a soldier yet no i have not done that yet so um, i've already created that particular uh, table why did you become a soldier so here we go um so chances are that they were that they grew up in a community nearby um, monsters, and that's why he got involved in this in whatever soldier group that they got in. She she got involved in, um, and so she's now been trying to use that as a way of protecting her family. Excuse me from the monsters. All right, so that's some pretty darn good backstory that I can work with now. I can now use this to create the rest of my character, and so I'm going to now do so. I'm going to create my character. Uh, I suppose, actually, I'm going to, hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll come back to that, because there was something else I wanted to get into. There's also some more available in Xanthar's Guide, and I'm going to have a look to see to see if I like, if there's anything else in there that's interesting about how he, they chose to do what they did. Um, this is all the reasons why, that's where I created those other tables, we're not going to worry about that, so it's not the personal decisions, it's the life events. So part of this has to take tables based off of human years. So uh, dwarven years, let's go have a look at, at a dwarf here real quick. Dwarf. If you look at the instructions in dwarf well, for, the, for the race, <clears throat> and we'll create names here in a second, but um, for the dwarf race, it'll tell you how old, how old dwarves get. Kinds of kingdoms, gods, goals, clans. Uh, here we go, slow to trust. Uh, let's get into the traits. Age. Um, they, on average, they live about 350 years. So I'm going to multiply uh, our D100 by 3.5 to get to what, how much it's going to be. So the, this particular soldier is 1D100 times 3.5. 150 years old, okay? Now, that was 43 that I rolled on here. So according to that, to kind of go with the um, number of life events that have happened, uh, that would be the equi human equivalent of 43, so 1d4 life events. This can get in kind of interesting. So here we go. Uh, 1d4 life events, that is, means that this particular dwarf has had... Oof! He's had... A, she has had a life. Oof! Alrighty. Let's get this going then. Let's make our life events table. Uh, life events. Here we go. This is probably going to be a table all to itself. Oh, we get secondary tables too, so that's kind of cool. So we'll put all this in, in too. So, life events table. Life events. Hey, Babacus! Good to see you there! I'm, pr I'm hoping I'm saying that right. That's the, the tricky thing with some of your, your creative names, is that the name Babacus, if I don't say it right, do I run the risk of offending? That could be dangerous territory right there. But, here I go. Alright, so, uh, just joining in, Bobicus, here's basically what I'm doing. I'm trying to create um, rollable tables that will allow me to create deep, detailed NPCs super, super fast. Uh, and so I'm creating the tables for the first time. I've not done this before. And I'm doing this, and I'm creating off my... Um, I'm creating a soldier character for my, one of my campaigns coming up. <laughs> Co yeah. Okay, so I did have COVID beard, which is really funny because anybody who's known me in real life knows that COVID, that me and a beard, they don't match. They don't work. I Like, I get the weird patchies, and then the, of course, you also have to take care of a beard and be really, really good at doing so with, like, the oils and such, and I just wasn't. <laughs> so after a little bit, um, Mrs. Windy J said, okay, enough's enough. 
And so did the kids, actually. The kids are like, you're scratching my face off, Daddy. Please stop. So I, I got rid of it. That was still summer ago. COVID beard, off. Yeah, you're definitely going to feel like a new person like that. Uh, all righty. Going through this life table, there's lots in here. Thankfully, the waiting's nice and simple and straightforward. Um, here we go. You made a friend of an adventure. That's kind of fun. Um, 10 options that that 10 possible times that can happen. This one's long. This one's got lots of opportunities. Um, you spent time working in a particular job. So now we're going to get this person to huzzah. That makes sense, actually. More likely that you're going to have that your life event is going to be you used to work. <laughs> um, and I actually like it. If I have characters who go through this story and they roll like a 50, somewhere between a 51 and a 70, and they look at me and they're like, are you serious? I'm actually getting more money than my regular background suggests. Like, yeah. I mean, you haven't been, you didn't, you weren't just born a hermit. <laughs> you weren't just born an acolyte and suddenly, oh, that's how you got your stuff. There's possible, a uh, very strong possibility that your character had more backstory than that. And that maybe that backstory gave you either experience or money. And so they get happy when I tell them, yeah, you do get some more gold. Ha ha ha. Ooh, committed a crime. Yeah, I, I, I like the idea of looking young. I also like the idea of being young. Problem is that that's starting to get harder to do on both sides. <laughs> so... Uh, when I first started teaching to age 25, the number of people who confused me for grade tenor was ridiculous. <sighs> that was many moons ago. I now have some more crow's feet. All right. Let's find out what these four life events were. Okay, we're going to first of all um, create the, uh, the macro for it. So this is going to be the macro for... Uh, let's add this macro for... Life events, huzzah. All right, so all about life events. We're going to say XE. Um, what is this? Is this personal? This is, no, it's actually just called life events. How marvelous. Life events. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, which table do you want to roll on? And the first table we're going to have on here is going to be the life events main table. And so it's, I just called it life events. I'll change these other ones later. Huzzah. Okay. Alrighty. So let's get that one in the bar. Let's roll the life events. Okay. Here are my four life events coming up for this character. So uh, this character is going to start with start with two a uh, two d cool, um, and met someone important, went on an adventure, went on an adventure. Cool. All right. So, um, let's see here. How much of this am I willing to flesh out for an NPC? If I want to go super deep dive, I will. But I think what's more interesting is these adventures um, that what kinds of adventures would they have come up with um, and so we'll do a little bit you know what actually we'll, we'll use supplemental table to, to determine um, you know what we won't do worry I'm not gonna worry about this one because nobody's gonna ask about that nobody's gonna learn about it for this particular soldier character so I'm not gonna worry about that I'll give them a bit of money sure why not let's give them Okay, so this person is going to start off the game, uh, start off um, having it be a bit five, five gold, a little bit more. Um, so I suppose if this soldier gets killed, there's going to be an extra five gold on them from what I normally roll. So this, I'm just going to make this a, mod a gold modifier for the treasure. That's kind of cool. Um, there we go. And so now we go to all about life events. He went on an adventure, roll on the adventure still. So that's that's what we got to create now. So we got to create this lovely adventures table. That there. Oh, look right there, right there. Awesome. Okay, so let's roll on the adventures table. Uh, let's create the table first. 
Adventures. This one's kind of fun because I can use this for some backstory as well for characters. So let's do this. Let's add in. Um, it nearly died in this adventure. We're not even sure what the adventure was, um, but you nearly died. Um, grievous injury. And it still hurts. That makes for some good for some good NPC play. You were wounded, but in time you fully recovered. That also can have some fun with it with NPC play as well. Hmm. This can help me come up with some physical descriptions of my female sol dwarven soldier. It's kind of nice. You're poisoned by a trap or a monster, which means that this person would probably be particularly careful of that kind of thing again in the future. So that's why I like doing this adventures table is because you can get a lot of pretty cool information off of it. Um, this one's 10. Okay, it looks like these are all 10. Almost all of these are exactly 10. Um, terribly frightened by something. Ooh, that could be fun. Um... I would I would have some fun trying to create something that they were frightened of. Who knows that might come up in the in the role play as well. Found some treasure. Hey, look at this. You found some treasure on your adventure, so this person could get a lot if they roll really well. Alrighty. Oh, they could do really well. Considerable amount of treasure. Here we go. This one, there's nine chances of this one, and um, one chance that you come across a magic item. A common magic item. So this is like Xanthar's Guide and Tash's only are the only ones that have common magic items in them. Uh, there's a couple in... I th no, actually, I don't think there's anything in the DM's Guide, but um, that's where they where you'll find them mostly. Alrighty. Let's find... Oh, I gotta put that into the proper make row. Uh, and that is... It's not gonna be the soldier anymore. This is gonna be the adventures. And the adventures table. Adventures. Oops. Huzzah! All right, and now that I've got that, I can go into my adventures table and roll it, and a grievous in time to time. So this is where I'm going to say, okay, this female soldier has a sore sore body part. Your turn. You get to help me with, out with this one, okay? So I have a female adventurer, or sorry, not female adventurer, female soldier, who in some sort of an adventure got injured. What's the injury? That's what I want you guys to help me fill in this time. I could come up with this on my own, but it's your turn. So what's the injury? Put it in the chat. What do you think? And then if I get a whole bunch of ideas, then I'll roll for whatever the injury is. Um, that gives me my life events. Let's see what else we can do. Uh, that might actually cover it. I don't think I need to worry about anything else. You guys are going to help me out with the cause the injury. So what is this NPC's injury? Chat. Uh, put your ideas in chat. All right. Lost their main sword arm if they use one-handed weapons. Ooh, ooh, that's fun. All right. They But they recovered. The wound healed. So I might tweak that one just a little bit, but we'll put that in the list of options. And, oh, my chat just decided to biff it, so I'll just pull you guys back up here. Alrighty, there we go. Cut across the eye from a long-fought enemy. I like that one, too. Alrighty. And we'll come back to that in a couple because now that I've got all that information, I can actually get into this thing. Uh, dwarven names. Now, fantasy name generator is never a bad idea. Let's go with that. Fantasy name generator for dwarf. Dwarf name generator. Huzzah. Okay, so... Let's see here. We're going to roll this out now. We're going to roll across. Uh, so we're going to go with uh, Sarath's idea here is going to be uh, idea number one. Crash tester, gonna idea number two. Let's roll this out. 1d2. 
The winner is, oh, okay, they lost their main sword arm. I'm going to tweak that. I'm going to say that their main sword arm, um, you know what? They could. Um, that they could have had a grievous injury, that they lost their main sword arm, the wound is healed, but they had to go through a whole great big growth re uh, recreation process. So this female um, dwarf has her has uh, had her arm regrown, um, which is possible with certain magics, uh, but it's very stiff and not doesn't work the same way anymore. So that's going to be this particular character's weeble. Um all right, so there we go. That was that. Let's get some female dwarf, na dwarf names. Okay. Let's go with... Um, oh, which name? I like. I kind of like uh, Derulin Hornchest. That's going to be fun. Um, let's have that one. That might almost sound a little bit inappropriate, but we're going to have fun with that anyway. So my new character's name is Derulin Hornchest. Aha, already. So, Derulin, we are creating a character. And we're using the character master right now. So, in this particular case, I think this character, uh, I need this character to be around a level two, maybe three character anyway, but we'll start from scratch. Now, interesting point if you go from left to right, just like the player's handbook would. I don't do that. I refuse to do it that way uh, because I find that I end up going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Now, the character master has a review section where a lot that where you go back to fix things if you need to, but I don't want to have to worry about that, and I still like to create base storyline that I've created, so I don't start with the race. I start with the background. And so this particular background I know is going to be a soldier, and now I just have to choose based off of the background that we now have once it populates it here for you. So automatically, I know what some of my skill proficiencies are going to be. I this If I had gone from left to right, I'd get some skill proficiencies from my class and then decide I'd have to change it based off of the background I went with. And I hated doing that. I never liked doing that. So I do it this way instead. So my tool proficiencies, let's see here. This particular person um, is a soldier, so uh, and, and had arm removed, has sisters. So sisters might be the deal that make make the point here, and so uh, our sisters more likely to play um, dice, dragon chess, um, playing cards, uh, something along those lines. I'm going to say that a little bit more strategic kind of thing for this person, dragon chess would be a good one. Um, they ha get a military rank as a, as their soldier. Um, I won't tell you what that is because that'll be a spoiler. And in this particular case. Uh, this one is going to be uh, the specialty I'm going to make for this one is going to be an officer because this is what the story my storyline requires of me. All right, and I thankfully for the character master I can just go with the roles. So I'm going to go with a role for a personality, uh, face problems head on, polite and respectful. Good deal. Um, live and let live. Ideals aren't worth killing for. Um, actually, that works out pretty well for this for what I need for this character inside the story. Um, my honor is my life. Sounds very dwarven in nature anyway. Um, I'd rather eat my armor than admit when I'm wrong. That's interesting. That could be very, and that could possibly be, play in a little bit into the whole background of the arm loss kind of thing too. So there we go. Now we've got our background. Um, now that I've got our background, the abilities I'm also going to choose right now as well. This is these ability scores. And I, I go from all my NPCs, I go standard array. I don't go crazy with things. I just totally go standard array. Um, and uh, so, and you know what? Actually, I'm not. I'm going to go with a class here first. Uh, and then I'll do my abilities based off of that. So class. In this particular case, I'm going to make this dwarf who happens to have a bum arm, probably got a bum arm because they were a melee combat person. Um, but they also are family people. Um, then we're going to go with, uh, I think we're probably just going to go with either, a, we could go with either a barbarian or a fighter. They're poor. They were raised by their grandparents. Uh, I could actually make this super simple and roll on that class chart that is available in, actually, let's do that. Let's let's roll, uh, roll on that class chart real quick. Did I make the, no, I made the race chart. But I haven't made the class chart yet, so let's do that real quick. And so we're going to make that class chart. So the class chart was in the supplemental tables. Huzzah. 
It's thinking, it's thinking, it's thinking. <laughs> and so this is the class chart. And now the class chart that's in Xanthers is very much the standard classes. Artificer isn't even in it. So I'm going to go, and, and that's okay. I'm okay with that. Um, but here's your class table. So we're going to add Barbarian in. I do have veto power. Just because I go by um, the roles doesn't necessarily mean that I um, am stuck to them. I am not uh, beholden to whatever end I end up rolling if I don't think it's going to fit the job. Um, and, but, and I may decide, I, I, I don't really think that most of my NPCs, like unless I have a specific reason for having an artificer, I'm likely not going to do that. Uh, 15 chances of having a cleric. Clerics are more common than bards and barbarians. That's fine by me. Druid is far less common than that. Uh, fighter is a 7 out of 7 chance, or 7 out of 100 chance too. No, it's not, because math says, dictates. Hang on. Uh, no, that's 5, 6 chance. So fighter is not very common. Um, monk. That is a six as well. Oops, monk. Six chances of having a monk. And paladin. That is six chances of having a paladin by the looks of things too. Uh, no, yep. yep. Yep, yep, six chances of having a paladin. Six chances of having a ranger. Chances are that if I ever do a ranger ever again, it's going to be the Tasha's ranger. The ranger that was in the player's handbook, quite underpowered. Here we go. Let's go for a rogue. Lots of rogues in the world, apparently, according to this. 13, 14 chances of having a rogue. Um, five chances of having a sorcerer, which is I'm I'm quite fine with. Uh, warlock is also five chances, and then six chances of having a wizard. Alrighty, let's find out. Let's put this into the supplemental life tables. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to put it in the background. Uh, yilly, yilly, yilly. Well, I can put it in both, I suppose. So uh, I think that's what I'll do. Class. And it's going to be the class table. And seeing as I'm going to need that in both, I'll just simply copy that. And I'll, nope, that one. And I'll put it in here. Huzzah. Alrighty. Here we go. So it's the background. We're going to roll on the class table and we end up with. Oh, it didn't like that. Why didn't it like that? Did I do the wrong thing in there? Let's have a look at my lovely tables. Mmm. Like that. No, that's not what I want. I want the background. Uh, oh, yeah, because I totally didn't type it right. That's why. That's better. I'll, I'll have to fix that here, too, because I did the copy-paste thing like a fool. All right, that makes a little bit more sense. Let's try that again, see what it rolls out for me. Here we go. Cut. Oh, no, not that one. I want the background. Cut chunk. Boom. All right, so this is a Dwarven Barbarian. I like that rule. That's going to turn out really nice. On that. That one, Sarah, the Tasha's Ranger is so much better. I play, I'm play. i playing a uh, Tasha's Ranger in my um, in, a, in a game of Rhyme of the Frostmaiden that I'm uh, that I'm in, and very much happier with that Ranger. So ho, 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 much better. All right, so now we've got myself a. Um, uh, let's get back up here to this lovely character mancer. We're going to go into the class. I said barbarian. I like it. Okay, so with my barbarian. Barbarian. I'm going to choose some proficiencies. In this particular case, one I'm going to give them proficiency. Well, they're proficient in animal vehicle or in, in land vehicles, so let's give them some animal handling. They're proficient in and, and they've been fighting, so I would suspect that they're going to be good in one of these guys, especially if they were adventuring already in the past. So let's give. I guess I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with perception for this uh, this little barbarian. Okay. Now that I've got myself my Barbarian figured out, I already know that my class is going to be Dwarf because I rolled it. 
and now I can choose my alignment off of this. Um, this is going to be this character is going to be neutral good uh, because it cares, and that's simply because I think he cares about family. Uh, but I could actually roll on the alignment table. Actually, you know what? I I think I actually have to do that based off of what I'm going to come across in my lovely little campaign. So here we go. Alignment table. Alignment. Okay. Let's go with one chance of getting this. One chance of getting chaotic good or chaotic neutral. Uh, if I remember correctly, this was nine chances of getting this. I'm starting to get used to this now. Nine chances of getting that. Uh, here we go. 46 chances of getting this. 46 chances of getting this. This is a supplemental table too, so I'll have to put that in there. And then 100 chances of just being pulled boring neutral. 104 actually chances of this. Uh, huzzah, okay. So that's my alignment table. Let's put that into the supplemental life place. Uh, chunk, I'll reorder these later. I'm less interested in how ordered I am. Right now, save that, and let's roll it. So, according to the dice, my barbarian female dwarf soldier, neutral. All right, I can't really get much more clear than that. That's the kind of character this one's going to be. Alignment is neutral. All righty. Uh, tool proficiencies. Uh, let's see here. Uh, if they have been working, uh, based off of this, they're a barbarian. Um, I'm going to give them proficiency with the thing that lets them drink. There we go. Alrighty, and all this other stuff is here. I kind of indicated this one's going to have to be a hill dwarf um, based off of some of the other stuff that we came up with. So that's what we're going to go with. And that was an easy decision now. Okay, The idea of being a hill dwarf was a super easy decision because of all the other roles I went with. Uh, so there we go. Now I can go for... The rest of the stuff I can get into here, and I'm going to go for standard array. Um, this is a barbarian, and so as a barbarian, and you can actually check this out in your um, in the player's handbook. It kind of gives you a quick build. And seeing as being an NPC, and I'm not doing a full, uh, I mean, it's going to it could be a playable character in the end, um, but because it is basically a uh, an NPC, I'm going to look at the quick build. Uh, for barbarians, and what I'm, you're going to see is that strength and constitution is probably your best bet. Although the Outlander background is what it suggested, um, this barbarian has gone into the soldiery instead. So it's a bit of an interesting storyline. So strength is going to be the big one. Constitution is going to be after that. Let's go with um, I gave them perception skill, um, and their animal handling was also a skill. So uh, let's go down to the dexterity, um, and then it's a toss-up between intelligence and charisma. That they're an officer, so they should have at least a little bit of charisma. There you go. S decisions made based off of all of the background of this person already. So this person is going to be, and considering they're a dwarf, they're going to get some some boosts already as it is. Um, now I can get into the equipment that they're going to have. We have a. Uh, let's go with. Always go with class equipment. And I'll roll that, uh, I'll put that five gold in later on as well. Uh, so we're going to go for a martial weapon. They have, they have to go with a, they're probably going to go with a one-handed weapon now that they've been injured. So let's go with a simple one-handed weapon like a, um, well, this can be short. Uh, let's go, let's give them a scimitar and then a hand axe at the same time. I like uh, the two hand axe axes so that's what they're going to have um they are going to carry that even though they like to play dragon chess oh that would make, make me change my mind I, i'm probably going to give them a deck of cards instead but let's get back to their background and i think that was in their background what well, yeah let's get that let's give them proficiency in the playing cards instead that makes a bit more sense there we go 
Cool, cool, cool. Uh, the arcane is going to be a many feats. Um, the bio biographies, this is where I can put your things in. So uh, we did, what did we say that was, uh, the age was going to be? It's, oh, it's in the chat. We can check that out in the chat. Um, but the age, uh, let's make that big enough that I can see it. The age was, where did it go? Ah, 150 years old. Okay, so this is a uh, 150 year old, four foot, eight inch, that's randomly chosen. Um, somebody who's a foot taller than that, five foot eight, five foot eight is going to weigh somewhere in the neighborhood of 160 pounds if they're muscly. Um, let's give them eye color. Uh, I could make some roll charts for these guys too if I wanted to. Brown eyes, uh, brown hair, uh, skin is um, uh, fair. No, nah, we're not. Uh, we're we're going to say bearded, uh, hairy. There we go. That's what we're going to She's a hairy dwarf. There we go. And uh, there we go. So that's my biography basics. Okay. I haven't put anything else into the sheet quite yet. I can still do that, though. Um, and huzzah. Created. This will be my newest npc in one of my campaigns either stones of faerun or in dragon spire peak or in olivos all of it's showing up now the challenges <laughs> extra sounds coming up here challenges that this is supposed to be a second level character so i'm just going to throw in some experience points based off of that uh and now that we've done roll 20 gives me the character mancer where really all i have to do for level two is roll up and so i'm going to just simply take the average keep it nice and simple no multi-classing required I'm going to be second level barbarian as uh, thing is my barbarians already got all their weapons sorted out there's a javelin involved um all of their different abilities because they're dwarf they can see into the dark um defend armor defense uh this dwarf can rage all of those wonderful things uh already sorted out makes it nice and easy so that i can keep track track of everything here too now let's get into the biography just a little bit um and actually i'm going to put the biography in here instead um which for whatever reason i'm not able to edit despite being the dm so, so whatever i'll just be here instead um the character's backstory uh four siblings one uh, oldest is a brother uh, next to our sisters last is a twin sister and uh we also raised by grandma uh by dad's mom and dad we'll say um what else did we in here uh, did some measuring left arm was lopped off by i don't know let's make him lopped off lopped um oh well just an enemy lopped off period whatever lopped off um regrowth took months now the arm is not as strong as the right arm so stick to one-handed weapons and um that's good there. So what else did we have there? We said that, um, let's go back here. Uh, oh yeah, they made some money. So let's go give them that money. Uh, and it was 2d6, which I think we ended up saying was five gold. So we're going to add five gold to their pile. So they now have 15 gold instead. Um, that's the grievous injury. Went on an adventure. Um, spent, that's the, the gold we just did. Uh, joined the militia to protect my community from monsters. So now I guess now the challenge is going to be I have to choose the community. So joined the militia. I can't tell you the community though, not on the stream because it's going to give it away. It's going to be a spoiler, so I can't do that. Joined the militia to help protect my community from monsters. Alrighty. Um, was poor parents were taken away. After, so raised by dad's mom and dad after parents were taken away by monsters. There, solved. By monsters. Um, uh, 
uh, second oldest is a sister. Third oldest is a sister that uh, is poor due to her um, husband being ta uh, killed by monsters. I'll have to figure out what the monsters are later. Um, and unskilled. Last is a twin sister. Okay. Uh, that kind of goes well with that. Everybody's friendly with each other. Um, so husband and, you know what, husband and um, we're going to say they were a farmer and livestock being killed by monsters. There we go. So they don't have anything left. Um, yeah, 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 that works. Okay, that basically covers everything here, guys. There we go. We have myself, ourselves a new character. Now, I guess the other thing is I get to go find a good picture of a female dwarf uh, and make a token for it. So tools that I use for that, here we go. Images, Google. Um, when we find one that we like, uh, try to give credit wherever I can because there's some pretty awesome stuff out there in the interworlds. Um, let's go female dwarf. Um barbarian let's see what happens when they come up with this female dwarf barbarian there's some interesting looking ones here we're going to see if we can find a good one where we can see an arm that has been injured or hand axe or something to that effect that's um or a sword eh, this one here that's not bad it's a pathfinder one we can, but it looks very barbaric in nature um so we can go with this uh dwarf here which is the same as this one i suppose really so kings of the realm so we'll have to give um uh, kudos to where it is going to be coming from. Huzzah! That's not the button I wanted to do. I wanted to open the image in the new tab. Huzzah! There we go. So I'm just going to quickly put this onto my desktop. Bring it on my downloads folder. And then, as I do for everything, I roll token. Or I go token stamp. Because I like my circular token. token. Huzzah! As a, just a basic order. That's nice that token stamp has actually put this basic order in there. Um, let's get into the downloads. And huzzah. We're going to get this picture in. All we need is that part of our dwarf. Now, the, oh, except this dwarf isn't very hairy. Mm. <laughs> we need a hairy dwarf. Do we have a hairy dwarf picture anywhere here? A hairy female dwarf. Now, everybody seems to think that females are supposed to be fair-skinned and don't shave. So, that there we go. Hairy female dwarf. Yeah. That could be a winner right there. Uh, hairy female dwarf barbarian. Uh, so far, that might be the winner. Yep, that's the winner. And so, I might just uh, do some quick edits. To this using I use Photoshop uh, not Photoshop photo paint yeah it's totally what I'm gonna do um, who do I need to give credit to on this one um, where did you come from where did you come from where did you come from it's on Twitter so let's see here oh I didn't see it I didn't come up with it for me, so apparently wherever it was, it's no longer there. That's unfortunate, but I still like it, so I'm going to use it. Um, if you happen to own this artwork, let me let me know so I can give you the credit where it's due. Um, chunk, chunk. Photo paint. This is a Corel product, not an Adobe product. Yes, I know I'm cheaping out, um, but you know Corel Draw does plenty of the stuff that I need it to do anyway, so I'm not concerned about my ability to be successful. All right, Corel Photo Paint, here we go. Let's open up uh, that one I just downloaded, which was in my downloads folder. Chink, chink. And we're just gonna do a little bit of adjustment to make her look a little bit more brown-eyed and brown-haired. So this is going to be a, what do you, do you think? Let's try. Let's see if I can do it really well with this. We're going to go uh, preview that. Ooh, yeah, that's not going to do the trick. Uh, let's go like this. Oop, that's not the one. Saturation. That's a little bit more brown in nature. 
but now it almost looks sepia toned. So that's not quite what I'm going for. Let's do a color change instead. Where's the color balance? There we go. Color balance. Let's take some of the red off. Uh, and it's actually the midtones I'm worried about more than anything, not so much the shadows. Um. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. I need I need some more yellow. Nope, that's not the way to do this either. Let's try a color replacement feature. Where is that sucker? Uh, replace colors. Here we go. Okay, so let's choose. Generally speaking, let's choose this kind of a color, and let's make it. Yeah, it's kind of all over the place there, isn't it? Let's make it a little bit browner. So far, so good. So that's one color dealt with. Um, okay. And now let's do some more with a different color. Let's take some of these golden colors that exist. And... Oof! That was too much. That's not the right color. Cancel that nonsense. Um... Oops, I guess I can't cancel. I just have to change its sensitivity, that's all. So let's go like this. Let's get rid of the sensitivity on this completely. Choose that color there. Actually, let's choose that kind of orangey color instead. And let's make it a slightly uh, darker brown. It happens. And... Oof, nope, that's not going to do the trick too much. Let's try a different color altogether. Let's try doing that color instead. Nope, I'm not going to be able to do it with the replace colors feature either. That's really frustrating. Uh, let's try then. Let's try some brightness stuff and contrast stuff. Let's get rid of some of this contrast. Let's keep the intensity somewhat. But we're going to get the contrast right down. It's almost graying everything. Contrast. Nope. That's not going to do it either. Good heavens. <sighs> Color. I guess we're going to go like this. We'll go with a channel mixer. Let's see if this do, does the trick. Let's take the reds and turn them down. Nope. Yeah, it's probably because it's just really, really well balanced. That's all. This, this this painting is really well balanced, which is of course, or this uh, artwork is really well balanced, which of course makes things that much more challenging to deal with. Let's try and reset everything. Let's get rid of the reds and yeah, I'm still not getting any of the colors I'm looking for. It's not, it's, oh, it's because it's preserving luminance. Let's try that. Let's get rid of that and not preserve the luminance. Shadows and midtones. Let's change. Now you're just looking green and ugly. She's going to stay red redheaded. Is that a bit bad thing? I don't know. Uh, I guess there is always this option. I could just grayscale her. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's one thing I didn't like that. Um, what happens if we say more yellow? Or yellow. No, because we need her to be darker. We need the everything to be darker. So we're going to start off with this then. That's a lot more red. Or a lot more darkness. It still looks awfully red though. So, she's going to be a redhead. That's it. No point in fighting that much for an NPC. So I'll go back into that character and I'll fix that later. But she's still going to be hairy. And here we go. That's a little bit too zoomed in for my taste, so let's get it unzoomed in. Ah. 
That is true. Although I think I like how that is going to turn out anyway, so we're just going to keep that. All right, so there we go. One token for, uh, this is, oh, I can't save it where I would not want to save it yet. So what was the character's name again? Let's go find, I can't find that out here. What's the character's name again? Uh, Darylin. There we go. All right. Uh, let's download Darylin then. Darylin, here we go. And now into to my compendium of all sorts of pictures and such. We're going to bring in today's creation known as Darylin. And in doing so, I should be able to let's get her back open again so I can edit her. There we go. For whatever reason, those buttons weren't showing up. And we're going to use that. And I'll set up Darylin's token too. So Darylin. You are a dwarf who can see in the dark 60 feet. And there, and this is how I like to set up my tokens, by the way, as well. I like to go with my HP on the red, because I figure it looks like blood. Yeah. Um, and I don't know why I didn't take that. Let's try that again. HP. Where'd you go, HP? Oh, because it's not attached to her yet. Okay, there we go. There we go. HP. Let's get you up there now. And I like to put AC here as well. Uh, now, she doesn't have a high AC, so that might be something that I tweak um, for the character. We'll see. Maybe put on, uh, change up some of the, uh, um, get, the, get them a chance to have a shield if they're proficient with. Um, huzzah. Looks good. Uh, we're going to say use that token now. And so now let's have a look at this uh, character's uh, proficiencies. Because if they're a soldier, chances are... Oh, look at that. They're even proficient with some armors. Now, they don't have armor, which I always found weird as, uh, as a soldier that they wouldn't have armor as one of the things that's on their list. Um, so let's give them some armor that is, issue, that is, that is issued by... Um, the militia that they're a member of so let's go it has a 14 armor class for a soldier oh yeah the canadian spelling of armor don't do that uh there we go and they can do light and medium armor which is good um i'm kind of now their dexterity modifier is only one so putting anything else on aside from uh something that's going to go 13 plus dex it's not going to do the trick um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get them to have, well, we can go with, um, hide armor or studded leather armor or something like that. I, I feel like hide armor is probably your best bet for this particular creature. Um, and then and on top of the hide armor is sh a shield. And that might just be the way that we go because, uh, chain shirt, that's only going to get them to their current AC. Um, and that's because of the armor, unarmored defense thing here. While you're not uh, wearing armor, armor equals 10 plus your dex modifier plus your constitution modifier. You can use the shield. You know what? Forget it. We're not even going to give them an armor because they're a barbarian. Let's just give them a shield. So here we go. Basic shield. Huzzah. And now your armor class is 16. That's a much more. There. Now this person's actually going to be feeling like they're actually worth it. All right, so one NPC done. Now, that took a long time because I also had to set up the tables. Next time I do this, I'm just going to be able to burn through a bunch of these things. I still have some more tables to set up, so as I carry on, I'll continue to add the other tables in. But for now, that's pretty darn good. Uh, I've got myself my my brand new character, uh, my, my NPC that will be appearing in one of my other campaigns. Zah. And yeah, and it's well, it's deep. So if they were to ask 
uh, any questions of this character, if they, if I need to figure out a way of acting this character, it's not a problem. I can easily do so. Height is, uh, eyes are, uh, what color are her eyes? Let's have a look at that again. Um, eh, they're kind of green. We're going to say she's a green-eyed, come on, green-eyed, um, auburn-haired, hairy, 150-year-old, 4 foot 8, 160 pound, dwarf. And that is that character. So now what I can do is um, leave this lovely little campaign and using the uh, character vault tool. There we go, character vault tool. <laughs> oh yeah, you get to see some of my crazy tokens that I have in here. I'm going to import into my vault uh, a character from my, my character creator. And there she is. And now I can export her to any of the games that I've got going on. Huzzah! That's it. That's all she wrote. It's good timing too. It's time for me to kind of sign off and, and move on with the day. So that be all she wrote. Uh, we do have games. Game is happening on Thursday morning. It's a Dragons of Ice Fire Peak session. Currently they are um, dealing with a Mad King. I'm not entirely certain they're doing it well. But hey, we'll find out. Uh, there is also the Stones of Faerun campaign, which is starting up again on uh, what's the date? Just February second next week. And we have, of course, our Discord server is open. You can jump in and say and have a chat with us. Uh, you can uh, pop into um, uh, onto any of our streams as they happen as as well and hang out with us. There's also the website that kind of keeps you up to date on the campaigns as well as a couple of the resources I've been able to put together so far, the DM's guide, uh, sorry, dm.windyjmusic.com. And that pretty much covers it. Of course, I have a couple of things on DM's Guild, so uh, I, I know it looks like it's an awful lot of work for me to put it together, but once I put it together, it make I end up creating some pretty decent uh, tools that you can use to your advantage as well in your own circumstances at home in real life or what have you, such as the screen of superior referencing uh, or the encounter tracker the Chronicle of Encounters. And then, of course, this tool, which I'm kind of working on right now, which is the um, fast NPC creator uh, and, and a strategy for using them well. So uh, that's where we're going with. So there we go. Have a wonderful day and uh, play creatively and make yourself strong through all of this nonsense in the world. Thank you for joining me and Stay strong.